In early May 2025, I got the opportunity to visit Bontek in Sweden. They have a new factory and invited me to go take a look, ask some questions and see what they're all about. That was an opportunity that I jumped at, so this is my visit. In this video, I'm going to take a look around the factory and show you how they manufacture products. But get subscribed, because in the next video, we'll be answering a bunch of questions about Index. This video is technically sponsored by Bontech because they paid for me to visit their factory. But the creation of the video is just sponsored by me, so be sure to visit vector3d.shop. Why not check out VLMP2, our heatset insert press? Heatset inserts, like those from CNC Kitchen, which we also provide, have become very popular for 3D printed assembly. Our design comes with an in depth guide and is very easy to assemble. So why not grab a Pine Seal V2, our discounted tool, and some CNC Kitchen inserts to progress your 3D printed projects today? For today's factory tour, I'm going to be walking you through the manufacturing process of the LGX Pro and Pro Metal. So where possible, I'll be focusing on these components at each of the work stages. To help you keep your bearings as we travel around the factory, I've made this little diagram to help you know where we are. It's definitely not to scale and missing loads of details, but in general, it gives you an idea of whereabouts we are in the factory as we move around. Today, our tour begins in the workshop. In one corner of the workshop, we have this storage area for common materials. Lots of the things like nozzles are manufactured from these eight millimeter round bars. So you'll find these in steel, copper and brass materials. And then a number of the other CNC products are made from aluminium 6082. So these are stored down below and then cut before they're taken to the CNC machines. First, we'll take a look at how rods like this are machined into things like nozzles, CHT inserts and drive gears. Bontech currently operates four sliding head auto-loaded CNC lathes by Citizen. These are high precision machines manufactured by a world leading brand and can spit out parts like nozzles in less than 60 seconds. When it comes to the LGX Pro, these are the parts machined on the lathes. Today though, they weren't being made, so we're taking a look at some nozzles instead. Firstly, the material is deposited in the auto feeder. These are three meters long and will automatically feed the material that's placed in here into the working area of the lathe, allowing continuous automation of the production of the nozzles without having to just move it up a little bit or feed tiny bits of stock material into the lathe. Within the lathe itself, we essentially find the chuck, which holds the workpiece, a number of tools, which cut in various different operations, and of course, loads of cutting fluid. The cutting fluid helps keep everything cool, both the tools and the workpiece, in order to reduce deformation, reduce friction, reduce wear, therefore keeping the tool sharper for longer, and can also help in removal of the cutting chips. When the machining process is finished, the part automatically drops out into a small bin. These machines can manufacture stuff very small, including these CHT inserts, which press into the back of a nozzle. I don't have a banana for scale, but I think my hand does it justice anyway. <laughs> Under the microscope, we can start to see some of the detail in this manufacturing process and the complexity involved in making such tiny things. Once the parts are made, a small portion of each batch is inspected quickly using the micrometers and vernier scale available right next to the machines and a smaller portion move on to the inspection bay for detailed analysis. The other large machine found in the workshop, the primary one for machining aluminium is this five axis CNC by Brother. This one machine manufactures 20 to 30 different aluminium parts for Bontec, although obviously only one at a time. This part we're looking at here is the housing for the LGX Pro Metal and takes 18 of the 22 fitted tools in order to machine it. It takes around nine and a half minutes to complete and is done in two stages. You can see here as the two stages are fitted at once, one is placed face up and the other effectively face down. As you can tell, it's quite a loud process, but also quite a quick one, due to the high rate of speed at which the machine can remove material. With the machining operation completed, these are packed up into a foam tray and sent off to a local supplier to do the anodizing, so they match their final color. On the LGX Pro Metal, these are the parts machined from the 6082 aluminum alloy. With some of our parts now manufactured in the workshop, we move over to the inspection bay to take a closer look at a small selection of the parts to ensure consistent quality coming out of the machines. There are three main devices used for measuring here. 
The first is this M306 Techno. It's a high precision optical measuring machine. Firstly, the item for inspection is placed onto the central rotating table. Next, a pre-programmed routine will scan the object and take measurements. From the computer, you can then identify whether these measurements are within the appropriate tolerances for that product. This machine is responsible for measuring most of the external features of the nozzle. For example, the concentricity, the radial dimensions, the thread quality, and things like that. For the internal quality of the nozzle, we move over to the next machine. For this test to be conducted, the nozzle is first cut into two pieces and then placed into this 3D printed jig. As before, a pre-programmed routine will then drag the probe across the nozzle surface, putting the output onto the screen. The last tool is effectively a high precision digital microscope used for taking manual measurements of things like the gears. Once placed within the viewfinder, you can place geometry onto the screen, taking measurements of the part. Not everything manufactured here though is made from metal. So let's now move on and take a look at how SLS parts are produced. With the exception of prototypes, all the 3D printed parts from Bontech are produced from SLS. This used to be a service that they paid for, but now they have three machines running in-house pretty much 24-7 to provide these parts. These machines use a high-powered laser to melt a bed of powder into the final part. And of course, each machine has a little UPS just to make sure, in the case of any brownouts, that the machines can still run for a small amount of time. Well, of course, I couldn't do a full teardown of this machine while I was here. Here's a quick look inside so you can see what's going on. These bins of nylon 12 glass fiber powder are filled as much as possible in order to maximize the usage of the plastic and utilize the full time available on the machine. Once the parts come out of the machine, they have to go through this processing to basically remove all the excess powder from the manufacturing process. A combination of a vibrating plate and vacuum allows a lot of the powder to be pulled away and also not spread into the room. This material that was present in the manufacturing but not actually used will be recycled into the next process such that about half of the material being used has already been in the printer once. To maintain uptime, a number of spare parts and bins are kept available directly next to the machines to allow for continuous processing without having to wait for the previous cake of parts to cool down. Once the parts are removed from the cake, they then go into a sandblasting room where very small glass beads are blasted at high velocity into the parts in order to remove a kind of scale that builds up during the SLS processing to get you down to your actual raw part. This rotary bin that you see here allows for this process to be automated instead of one person having to stand and hold and blast each and every single individual part. Due to the porosity of SLS parts, the next stage is dyeing. This fills many of the pores within the part and gives it a nice consistent clean colour, in this case black. The final step for these parts is drying, where they sit in this cabinet for 1-2 to two hours at around 60 degrees celsius and then they're ready to use. That covers all of the primary manufacturing in-house, but there are still some more parts like the stepper motor, double gear and levers. So let's move along into the warehouse to learn about how those are acquired. First up, we have these two lever plates. These are laser cut from an external supplier before being broached and sandblasted in house in order to get the perfect tolerancing and overall appearance to match the requirements that Bontech have. Next, we'd have this double gear, which looks like it would be manufacturable on their lathes, but it's just outside the diameter at which they can process. So this again is manufactured externally. It's made from steel and hardened, which gives it this dark gray oxide layer. There's also a PTFE lined sleeve pressed into the center of the double gear in order to get a smooth high precision rotation on the pins. The pins themselves are also purchased as these are basically a commodity item. So these are just purchased at the correct specifications, much like things like screws and the PTFE coupler. With all these parts acquired, it's now time for assembly at the other end of the room. Assembly is completed by hand by skilled technicians. Work is completed in small batches in order to help keep control of how many are currently in progress. And on average, each extruder will take just a few minutes in total. Each of the parts required for the assembly are stored nearby, so you don't have to reach miles or go down to the other end of the shop in order to find the parts that you need. And each of the individual workbenches can be set up for assembly of any of the different various Bontech products. So you don't lock down a workbench to just having to assemble a single product. Before the assembled units are packaged, they're each individually tested in this 
extrusion force testing rig. The extruder is clamped into place, filament is inserted into the top, and then the test begins. The hot end is already hot, so it immediately starts extruding, and the load cell below measures the extrusion force. Three individual tests are run. If the extruder passes all three tests, it gets a big green success and is ready to be packaged. And that is how you make a Bontech LGX Pro. Thank you very much again to the Bontech team for hosting me at your factory in Sweden for two days. It was great to meet the whole team and learn about what you do. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.